So today what I hope that you're going to get out of this, and I want to front load it, is I want you to be moved from stressed to refreshed. If you go from a place of saying, you know, yeah, I was stressed when I came in, but I'm refreshed on the way out. Amen. Come on, somebody say, refresh me, Lord. Refresh me. And I believe if there's going to be a refreshment, there's going to also, there's going to be a hydration of the Holy Spirit. For it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by my spirit, say it to the Lord. So that means that when I speak truth over you, because God is the God of truth, grace and truth came through Jesus, and the spirit is the spirit of truth. When truth is spoken over you, it breaks every lie, and refreshment comes in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God praise for that. Come on, somebody give God praise for that. Refreshment comes with the word of God. Amen? This is not about an emotional thing, but this is, this is something that, is, that is, it transcends, transcends our emotions. Because it is a spiritual it is a spiritual gift that God gives us. You know, this gift has never been more important now than, than ever before because what do all these things have in common? Fear to take action, to make decisions, cowardness to deal with difficult situations, withdrawal from daily life, depression and discouragement, distrust and unbelief, a defeatist attitude, what does this all have in common? Unwise and harmful decisions. Or keeping a black screen when you should be praising God and saying, hey, here I am, present and accounted for. I just threw that in in Jesus' name. What they all have in common, they're all caused by stress. They're all fruits of anxiety. I believe we're living in one of the most anxious Times that the world has ever seen. Everybody's nervous. People are nervous when they go to the to the, the Petro Canada or getting filling up with gas. They're nervous when they go to the store because what you bought last year and the year before now has doubled and sometimes tripled. Can I get a good amen? There's a nervousness in the government. There's a nervousness, you know. In France, we just heard that that. Uh, Macron has continued in his, his path, and, and he hasn't been unseated, and we're finding that now Putin has moved in and destroying all of the Ukraine. People are nervous. When we hear about the fires that are taking place in the U.S., they're, they said they're earlier than they've ever been, and they said the burning has started, and it will not stop until after the summer. People said they're losing fortunes, losing all of their, 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 their dreams. People are nervous. They're talking about a, a, a third wave and another wave of, of the pandemic, and it's, it's sweeping through, and they said the numbers are climbing. People are nervous. You see, when you look at stress, it's nothing new, beloved. But how can we deal with the reality of anxiety and how can we live without worry in times like these? But I'm glad you asked that. I read an advertisement for an administrative assistant answered by God himself. And in the advertisement, it said, good afternoon, I am God. Today I will be handling all of your problems. Please remember that I do not need your help. If the devil happens to deliver a situation to you that you cannot handle, do not attempt to resolve it. Kindly put it in the SFJTD, something for Jesus to do box. It will be addressed in my time, not yours. Once the matter is placed into the box on the altar, do not hold on to it or attempt to remove it or resolve it on your own. Hold on, or removal will delay the resolution of your problem. Now, I, I love when you guys clap when God is talking. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, if it is a situation that you think you are capable of handling, please consult me in prayer to be sure that it is the proper assumption. Because I do not sleep or slumber, there is no need for you to lose any sleep. Rest, my child, if... 
need to contact me, I'm only a prayer away. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's what the resurrection is all about. The resurrection is about, it is resolved inside of Christ. But it's resolved in intimacy because to terminate our stress, our greatest need is peace. Jesus is the creator of peace. He is the prince of peace. You see, this is important because my next point is this. Bad results can be redeemed. Pastor John Otterberg in his book has written, Redeeming is what God is into. He is the finder of directionally challenged sheep, the searcher of missing coins, the embracer of foolish prodigal children. His favorite department in heaven is lost and found. If there is one way that human beings consistently underestimate God's love, it is perhaps in his loving longing to forgive. Failure is not final, but bad results can be redeemed. The Bible said eight days later, verse 26, his disciples were again in the house. Did you hear what he was saying? Because I think we're going to, we, we can miss out on that. Come on, somebody say, they're in the house. They're in the house. Come on, somebody say, the blessing is in the house. You see, a lot of times, I think even with the pandemic, the pandemonium, the pandemic, the pandemic, the pandemic, there's a whole lot of names for the pan, amen? A lot of us think that we can do things on our own because, oh no, I hear from God. Yes, you hear from God, boo, but God has never made the kingdom of God about a solo act. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. What does that mean? God has such a violent love for you that he would not leave you alone. That he literally says, I put a tracker inside of you. And that tracker means that you need to be with other sheep. You need to be with other people of God. You need to be in the place where God's presence is. For where two or three are gathered, God is in the midst. One can cast out a thousand. Two can cast out 10,000. You can't go this alone. I can't go this alone. I can't do this by myself. I need you. We need each other. We've got to do this together. 59 times he says, one another. Love one another. Encourage one another. Support one another. Hallelujah. If you believe it, somebody shout amen. You see, when we begin to do things as God says, I believe after this there will be glory. Jesus was saying in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, he says, tarry there and you shall receive power. The power of God was going to come in just a few moments after Jesus makes this declaration. Now, why is that important? Because we're Christian for a reason. We're not hire Krishnas. We're not Daddy Grace, and we're not we're not something else. We believe in Jesus Christ, and we believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe that when we pray, God answers. We believe that God is able to do everything but fail. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Death Slayer, the Peace Beast Teller, the One who is, was, and is to come. We believe that God has given us a mission and a mandate, and it doesn't matter what the devil throws at us. God is going to get our back. And we will be the head, not the tail, above, not beneath, the lender, not the borrower. We will see glory after this. If you believe it, shout yes. Say it again. Go oh, sit down. You're cutting into my time. Amen. We're Christian for a reason. Because we follow Christ. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody glad they're in Christ? Come on, wave your hand. Because what that means is failure is not final. What that means is bad results can be redeemed. 
The Bible says that Jesus came and he stood among them when the doors were locked. And then he said to Thomas, reach out your finger here and see my hands and put your hand in the place. Put it in here in my side and don't be faithless and credulous, but stop your unbelief and believe. You see, this is so powerful here because what Jesus was saying, he said, don't cover it up. Don't try to clean it up. Call it what it is because he says, I'm real. And I do what I say I'll do. Oh, glory to God. You see, this unbelief had, had, it was on the verge of taking over Judas completely. Because many times our mistakes and our failures bring us to a place of shame and condemnation. Because shame, is, it says, I, I, I made a mistake. Condemnation says, I am the mistake. You see, the problem is, is what Jesus said, if you don't turn that around, there's nothing in the world that a church service or anything else or anybody else can do. You can do, you can go and, and, and give all the bread you want to the hungry and you can do all the Bible studies you want. But he says, until you believe, nothing will change. I believe during this pandemic, it's been hard for us to stay focused. I believe it's been hard for us to concentrate. And I believe that we have been, been, been uh, assaulted in every possible way to distract us from focusing on the main thing and keeping that the main thing. That's why he says in Philippians 4, 6, he said, be anxious in nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request unto the Lord. And the peace of God will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The word guard is the word garrison. It means that God is going to set an, a troop around your heart and stop things that are coming in the midnight hour in your head. And those things that continue to keep you up at night, walking the floor. He said, I'm going to set a guard over you while you're at work so you don't have to worry about, am I going to catch the virus? Is it going to hit me? And if I catch it, will I survive it? I feel like today the Lord says, what he wants to do with this message after this is erase some stuff that we've been focusing on and renew our focus on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to this morning? Glory to God. Because the Lord said, you're going to use all of what I gave you and there will be glory after this. Amen. There will be glory. You see, when I look at this, about bad results can be redeemed. Judas never did get his prayer answered. But he said, unless I put my hand in his side, unless I touch him, I won't believe. And then the Lord comes in through locked doors. He's still coming through locked doors. He's still doing the unexpected at the unexpected time that you'll say, I never expected it. He comes in and he says, do you believe that I can do it? He shows up right in the midst. And watch this. They were all in locked doors because they were afraid what they did to Jesus, they were going to do to them. They were thinking that the same way he got whipped, they say, I ain't taking that whooping. I ain't taking that whooping. No, they ain't going to whoop me like that. And you know what else they did? They said, uh-uh, the Jews, for fear of the Jews. He said, I remember what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. I remember. But do you remember what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? When they came for Jesus, he said, who are you looking for? They all fell back. And then old Peter, old Paula, takes out his sword. Cha-cha! And he cut the servant's ear off. And what did Jesus say? If you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. But he said, it is written. Put your sword away. And then he took the boy's ear and put it back on. Why? Because he knew that if he didn't remove the evidence, Peter would have been incarcerated, whipped and beat because of what he did out of his impulse. A lot of us are being whipped and beat because of our impulses. And the Lord is saying, I cannot speak to you in a place of dysregulation, but I got to speak to you in a place of peace because I am the creator of peace. And that's where I do my best work, when there's peace inside of your heart. Therefore, he says, 
peace be still. Who am I talking to that God says right now, peace be still. You see, he's still the God who sees ahead. The one who is Jehovah Jireh, who knows what's getting ready to happen. Don't just say peace to your neighbor this time. Say it to yourself. Say, peace, be still. Put your hand on your head in that because the battle is between your ears. You may not think it is, but you've been up on economic standard time. I owe, I owe so off to work I go. What about inflation? Oh, put your hand on your head. Come on, somebody on the count of three. Peace, be still. One, two, three. Peace. Be still. Why is that important? Because you have authority, remember? It is authority through intimacy. Come on, somebody say, I have authority. You see, your words have power. This is what Jesus is saying. This is what he's talking about, the kingdom of God. He said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. You don't have to keep worrying about these things. You don't have to come stressing about these things. You need to speak to that thing. You need to talk to that thing. You need to put it under your feet in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I got authority. That's why I said, after this, I will walk in my authority. After this, I will stand in my joy. After this, I will move in the peace of Jesus that surpasses all understanding. After this, I will see what God says about me. After this. Oh, come on. Come on. Say, after this. this. You got to get an after this. Because the after this will pull you to what God has next and take you out of what seems like it's been forever. Which brings you to my last point. The future is bright. The future is bright. I said the future is bright. I believe that there is a bright future for each and every one of you. The Lord came to me and he says, tell them the future is bright. That's why he said, not long from now, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You see, this is the power that he's talking about. It's not necessarily power that everybody's going to know exactly that you are the sent one. But it is the sensitivity that you know that he loves me. The Bible said, Thomas answered, my Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, watch this. Because you have seen me, you believe. Trust and have faith. But this is what he told me, New Hope. Verse 29. Blessed and happy to be envied are those who have never seen me yet have believed and adhered and trust and relied on me. Come on, somebody say, I've never seen him in the flesh, but I believe him. You don't know what you just said. Watch, 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 watch this, what he says. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Come on, somebody say, I believe, I believe, I believe. If you believe, come on, lift up your hands. I believe, I believe, I believe. Yeah, see, you're, you're receiving this right now. The Lord says, blessed are you who believe who have not seen. Come on, somebody say, I received the blessing. I received the blessing. Come on, I received the blessing. The Lord told me, he says, he says that because you believe and have not seen, he said, that is the blessing of Abraham. I have blessed you today. So what does this mean, church? Well, it means this. Winning the bout with doubt means the first thing I got to recognize it. Come on, somebody say recognize it. I've got to admit them. Come on, somebody say, I've got to admit my doubts. Not submit, I need to admit my doubts. And I've got to confess them. Because James 5, 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous man and woman is powerful and effective. 
That means when you pray for each other, you're going to receive sensitivity to witness the Holy Spirit, strength of character, and a humble heart. Hallelujah. Today, the Lord said, I have planned not bad or sad news, but I plan good news for you. I put, I put something in this service that is going to put to sleep everything that has been nagging you in your life. Hallelujah. I've, I've, I've released, glory to God, a blessing upon this house that the devil cannot stop. There will be glory after this. I've put something in this house. A greater is he that is in thee than he that is in the world. I put glory to God. Put a praise on it. Somebody said, I receive it, I receive it. By, faith. by faith as the worship team comes forward.